don't even know if this is working. I'm just going to pretend it's exactly the same as Facebook. I know it's not, but um, I'm going to just pretend that it is. Uh, now, I've, I know I'm early, but I just want to make sure everything was set up and stuff. So bear with me. Um, I'm going to try and get my old comments screen. Um, oh, here it is. I'm running. Oh, got my comments. Um, obviously, this is all new, so it's trial and error today. So please bear with me. Um, I'm actually also hoping I can turn the camera around. Yes, I can. That's always a winner. Um, right. I don't know. I'll just do my little walkthrough, how I normally do. Uh, it's frozen on mine, so I really hope it's not frozen for you. Oh, no, I've paused it. Okay, guys. Oh, welcome. Hello. Um, I'm going to do my little walkthrough of everything that I normally do, um, materials and everything. Uh, obviously, we've been doing these for a while over on Facebook, and the majority of people wanted to try and do it on um, YouTube because I think you can watch it on the TV, and um, it's just... It's easier for a lot more people to access, especially if you're not a social media type person. So that's fine. Um, so we'll just give it a go and see how we get on. I think they're going to be saved on the channel, a bit like the save videos that we've done before on Facebook. I don't know. We'll just wing it and see. Um, obviously, took pictures yesterday feeding the ducks of geese and swans and things. So I think a couple of people have mentioned the geese. So I thought, fine, you know, we haven't done one yet. We've done loads of other things, but we haven't done a goose. So I thought we'd give that a go. Uh, treat myself. Got a new work T-shirt especially for the occasion. Uh, now the other one was just battered, so uh, yeah, treat yourself. Um, what else? Nothing else is new really, guys. It's all the same old drill. I am still in the kitchen. <laughs> Studio is still like, progress is slow, um, because our builder is working kind of like mate's time, so, because he's a one-man band and he's working full-time as well, so we're kind of slotted in as and when, which is a little bit annoying. But is what it is. So, yeah, still in the kitchen. Uh, life is still going on around me. Uh, it is an empty house at the moment, I will say. However, although all the phones are on silent, if the doorbell goes, <laughs> just bear with me with that. It has happened before, so you never know. The post hasn't come yet, so the postman might arrive at some point. Um, so, yeah, bear with me with that. Um, yeah, other than that, I think that's about it. Let's do a run through of what we've got here. Remember, if you haven't got all of these things, it really doesn't matter. This is just what I use every day. Um, you can use regular paper, you can use A4, A3, A2, go A0 if you want. Use crayons, felt tips, pens, whatever you want to use. Um, I am not sponsored or I'm not a brand partner or advertiser for any of these brands whatsoever. They're just my personal choice. Um, please don't feel you need to run out and dash and go and get them all. You really don't. Okay, so paper. I use this one, bad boy. Uh, Dana Roney, he's a 16 by 12 new pad, guys. Boom, check him out. Love a new pad. Yep, picked him up yesterday. Well, I didn't, if I'm indeed. Uh, he's like slightly textured, 300 weight paper he is. We love him. Uh, what else do we use? No, you need, you need nice rubber. I've got a nice Winsor & Newton rubber. Do love a nice rubber. Uh, I've got two or three of these. These are really good for getting writing and getting the lines out. Similarly, pencil. I've got a nice pencil here. Um, this is a B. This is a Derwent graphic. Sorry, if you can see it that way around. There he is. Um, nice and sharp. Get yourself a nice sharpener. Um, I've got, got a couple. Got a nice sharpener here. Keep your pencil nice and sharp for our drawing part. Um, right, now guys, paint. If you're going to paint, um, keep your palettes nice and clean. I have just cleaned mine up. I'm desperate for a new one. When it gets to this level, I'm like start itching for a new one. So bear with me. He has run out slightly, but I've still got enough to work with. This is my... Let me turn that on, oh, turn this upside down. Windsor and Newton 45 half pan palette. Loads of colours in there. Really, really lovely selection to work with. As you can see, he's well loved. Bless him. A uh, few colours are now somewhat diminishing, so I need to get some more of them. Uh, but in addition to that, that's why I've got this out. This is my little palette that clips off the top of that. Uh, I also use these two because these two are my faves. We love them. Cobalt, turquoise, light and opera rose. Now, both of these usually appear in most of my work. Little specks and splodges of them throughout the piece. So we're going to keep those handy as well in case we need to um, chuck a few of them in there. Uh, right, water. You're going to need a couple of cups of water. Um, just get a two just because it saves getting up. Um, and we're using sort of quite dark colours today, so it will get quite dark quite quickly. Right, uh, also get yourselves... Oh, it's back in the house, guys, back in the house. Get the old blitz out. A couple of sheets of kitchen roll, we need that to dry our brushes off in between. Um, right, 
Brushes, let's talk brushes. Uh, I've got quite a few. These are all, I say all of them, the majority of them are De La Roni Sable brushes, they're Aquafine. I love them. They're lots of different sizes and widths. Um, you don't have to go out and get a load of these. They are expensive, guys. Just get some nice brushes that you like working with. I use um, Sable as opposed to syn synthetic because it's just personal preference. It just, for me, it's how I like to work and it, I like the finish. So, I've got a selection here. We're going to use this one. I call him Big Bad Barry. We love him. You know we do. Uh, we use him quite a lot. Sorry, uh, I have four children, so Ben and Holly is ever a presence in our house. Uh, so Big Bad Barry it is. We've also got a couple of these little medium chaps here. They're sort of, um, let's see them, what sort of width are they? About half, not even half a centimetre, probably less than that. There's no sizes on these because I've worn them away. They've been well used and well loved over the years. This is my little spotter, he's a 10 slash zero, he's relatively new, if I get out of focus, he's tiny, he's great for eyes and finer detail, whiskers and toes and claws and things, um, but they're not cheap, Like that, I think that was like a tenner, so you know, if you're going to go and spend the money and you're going to use it, so be it, but if not, anything you've got is fine. Grab yourself a couple of drinks guys, I've got a water and a lemonade here, because uh, I'm going to be talking a lot. <laughs> I hope everyone's got the picture that I shared over on Facebook. If not, I will hold it up now so that you can kind of see it. We're working portrait today, so that's our little run through done. I'm hoping now that when I flip this round and clip it overhead, it's going to work. I can't actually see, I have got a comment screen here at the minute, but I can't actually see any comments. That might mean that no one's written anything, which is fine. <laughs> um, but I can't write back, so it's a bit different to Facebook. So I can't, when I'm on Facebook, I can read everything and kind of say, oh, hello, and, you know, I can't do that on here. So I'm just going to talk a lot and slow down as I go. I will kind of let everyone catch up. I know it's harder on here that I won't be able to sort of see if people need me to hold things up. I will hold the paper up as we go like I do over on Facebook and I will slow down and make sure everyone's kind of caught up. I am aware also some people are going to be watching this on catch up so you're lucky because you can just press pause. <laughs> but for the rest of you who are joining in now, um, you can't. So <laughs> we'll just give it a go. We're going to see how we get on. We're going to wing it. Uh, we're going to tackle this goose head on, guys. Get yourselves ready, and I will clip you up, and we'll see how we get on. Bear with me. Mm, it's telling me to rotate my device. I'm not happy about it. Let's move that out of the way, get some light. Move you over. Okay, how is everyone finding that. I've got a few thumbs ups. Thumbs ups work guys because I can still see <laughs> the people are happy. Um, that's why, oh someone can't comment. Yeah I don't know why, I'm not sure. I did set up the comment section uh, and live allow chat but for some reason uh, it's not having it. Mute microphone, don't want to do that. I don't want to play around with the settings too much guys because we're winning at the minute. Um, right here we go, let me hold that up for anybody who didn't see it. Sorry if it's a little bit out of focus. Lovely, isn't he? He was yesterday in our park, Rayfields Park in Romford, this was, this little chap. Well, I say little, he wasn't. He was absolutely enormous. He was towering over my two-year-old. Absolutely vast, he was. Loved sunflower seed as well. So there he is. We're going to give him a go. Now, I also know that we haven't got his tail in here, but don't worry, um, we're going to get that in. I know what it looks like, so we'll be fine. Right, let's do a little step-by-step step like we normally do with the drawing stage. Keep your nice, sharp pencil handy and make sure that your strokes are nice and light, guys, because we're going to take out all our pencil lines after we've done our painting, okay? Right, with that in mind, no further ado, dead on 11, let's get going. Now, I'm working roughly A3 size, so I've got a nice lot of space to work with. Um, doesn't matter what size paper you've got, guys, it's all going to be relative when we do our measuring out, okay? So, if we have a little look at our goose here, I want you to look at your paper and I want you to decide whereabouts you want your goose to go. Now, I want the top of mine to be around sort of here because I like to leave a nice gap for a mount for people who might want to frame it. So, just have a little look at your paper. You don't have to make it... Just make it a rough mark, okay, as to roughly where his head's going to go, Okay. So get a mark on there, be brave, just get stuck in. Right, similarly, we're going to go with his feet. Where do we want his feet to go? Roughly about there. Sorry, that's my dishwasher finishing. See, it's all going on in the kitchen today. Um, there's his feet. 
Now we've got that area, that's where we know our goose is going to sit, okay? Now let's have another look here. We need to work out his width. So that means from his nose point, which is probably the widest point, to his tail, which we can't see, but we're going to put in anyway. So similarly, let's get a couple of marks over to the side. I think his tail is going to go about there. And I think, well, his nose actually comes out wider than his chest, bless him. So we'll put his nose about there. Don't worry if this is, looks a bit wrong because we're going to move that. That's all right. Okay, so we should have a head section, a feet section. Roughly where his tail's going to go, roughly where his nose is going to go. But this might change. So please don't worry if we've got to take things out as we go. I've never drawn this before. I only took the photo yesterday. So I'm literally winging it with you. Okay, so please, if I rub stuff out, <laughs> welcome to my world. Don't worry about it, all right? Now, let's have a little look here. We need to work out halfway between the front end and the back end. So halfway, luckily, is his foot. If we drew an imaginary line up through his body, his foot pretty much separates the two halves. So just put a little halfway mark between the two width points that you did. I know it doesn't look like much at the minute for those of you who've not done it before. For those of you who have, you know how this works, you know how we roll. We just get a rough idea of the middle section, okay? I'll just give everyone a sec because I can't see any comments. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? Really, really not sure. I'm sure I'll figure it out, but you're all here, so that's good. Okay, so we've got our halfway line, we've got our head, and we've got our width, and we've got our feet. Let's have a little look now. If we look at our head section and our feet section, we need to sort of break this down. Now, you know how we do it. If I hold it up, we're going to break it down, I think, into thirds. So we're going to go head to bottom of neck. Bottom of neck to feet here, and then start of his legs to bottom of his feet. Yeah, does that make sense? So we've got one third, two thirds, three thirds. I think that's the best way to break it down. So let's have a little look. In between your top and your bottom, you need to make three sections that are all of equal distance. Okay, so if it helps, do what I'm doing. Just sort of use your fingers as a marker and break it down into one, two, three. So I'm going to put a little mark there. I'm going to do the same again about there. No, that's totally wrong. <laughs> one, two. That's fine. That'll do. Take out them ones. Ta da! Off you go. All right, so that should roughly look like three of the same equal distances. All right, we can always alter them. One, two, three. Okay, does that make sense? Oh, I've got nine thumbs ups. Happy days. Are we all good? So, let's have a little look now. We've got to break this down. We've got our middle mark. So if we have a little look where our middle mark goes, if we put our pencil down the line of our goose and we look at, if I get another pencil, where are you? There you go, Dave. If we get another pencil and we put it where his, let's put it where his tummy is. The bottom of our neck is halfway between those two marks. So between our halfway mark and our furthest width mark, halfway is where our neck is going to be. So if that's our halfway mark here, and that's our width part there, this is the bottom of his neck, but halfway between, we're gonna make the bottom of his neck, and that goes about there. Okay, let me hold that up for you. Yeah? We can make all these corrections as we go, guys, so don't, don't worry too much. And I know at the minute it just looks like lots of lines, but this is how we block out our um, composition and where we want different parts of his body, okay? So now that we've put the bottom mark in here of his neck, I'm going to take out the straight line. 
And I'm now going to head up towards the top of his head up here. So let's have a little zoom in and look at this line. He's like a seven o'clock line, isn't he? With a bend in the middle. So if we have a look at a clock angle, it's about five to seven. Okay, so we're heading up here at a sort of five to seven angle. Okay, remember how we do our clock faces. He's got a bend in the middle, but don't worry about that. If you prefer to draw it straight, draw it straight, and then we can always curve it as we go. I'm going to freehand sketch it very slowly. Bring it up. Bring it round. Just head up towards his head. Now, if I've got to move this top of his head mark, I'll do it in a sec, that's fine. I just want to make sure that we've got his nice long neck in. All right, this is only a rough guide. Now the back of his head, if we actually have a little look, is quite square here, this line, it's quite a square one. So I'm gonna take out my original top of head mark and I'm just going to make the back part of his head a bit straight, a bit square as we go towards the top. All right, now I'm gonna wait there just while everyone kind of gets that shape in. All right, I hope that helps. I'm just gonna hang fire. Why I can't see any comments. I did put the chat up. Oh, the action is turned off. What does that mean? The action is turned off for contact that is made for children. Ah, oh. well, I put that it was allowed for children because I thought it would be easier for kids to see it. Oh, I'm not happy about that. I think that's why, guys. I think that's why. I don't think I can edit it. No, I can't edit it. All right, but well, that might have solved the problem. So for next time, I'll know. I knew this one would be trial and error. So just, you know, we're all here. So that's all that matters. Okay, I hope you've all got like a neck shape in, roughly a five to seven with a little round bit at the top because that's where we're coming down to his nose. Now, as you can see, my nose part is wrong. And that's fine because I've got space to work with so I can move it, okay? So just bring your head over the top. Have a little look at the image you've got. Sorry, mine's moved over. Have a little look at the image you've got. You're coming round and down. Okay, now if we have a look, we're going to break his head down into sections. So if we look at it again, top of his head to bottom of his neck like this. One, two, three. So the bottom of his chin where this white area is here is your first third. Where the neck bends down here is going to be your second third. And here to the bottom of his neck is going to be your third third. So if that helps again, do what we did before. Break his neck down into three sections. One, two, three. Let me move you over, can you see? Does that help? We're just trying to block it out into sections so that it's easier to sort of plot in. So I hope that helps. Now I'm going to take out my original nose mark because it's not quite right. But we should already now start to have the shape that we're after. Okay. Now if you've got your, your thirds put in, mine should need to come down a little bit more. Let's rub that mark out. Make corrections as you go guys, it's fine. It's not a rocket, it's not rocket science, we're just we're just drawing. Okay. Have a little look here. This line comes up, the bottom of his chin comes up mm, just a bit more than quarter to three, isn't it? That sort of angle. It's just past quarter of three. So just sort of make that sort of line. And then we're going to head down towards the bottom of his neck. So nice and light and sketchy with your pencil. Just bring it down. Bring it round. And head down towards the bottom of his neck. Okay? Everyone with me? I hope so. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, dear. See, I'm just going to make a couple of corrections there. I'm not going to worry too much about the shape, guys, because this is all going to be painted or coloured or whatever you're going to do with it. 
All right, has everyone got like a neck and a head shape in? Now, before we do his beak, what I want us to do is I want us to come down and get his chest area in and his tummy. So we've got that marker, remember, which is roughly his body section. All right, so we're going to aim to come down here now mine is actually a little bit high i'm going to drop mine down slightly so i'm going to move it to about there so if you're looking at yours and you think you do, need to do the same do the same and i'm going to take out now this second second part of the third that we did for his neck because i don't need that now either okay all right everyone okay with that so far i don't want to rush off because i want to make sure you've all kind of happy with your measurements and things so what we're going to do guys is we're going to come right the way down here we're going to follow his tummy sorry let me hold it up we're going to follow his tummy and we're going to come round here and down now remember we did his halfway mark for his where his legs are going to meet so this part here where we did our mark our halfway mark and our third mark you should have like a little cross section here you can just put in that sort of a shape which is where this part is yeah so that's where we know we're headed to all right so get that in and then what you can do if you've done this sort of shape is you can take out this halfway mark because you don't need that now and then you can work with this part because this is the line we're following up to join up here okay are we all good? Does that make sense? I really hope that makes sense. Again, I've not done this before, this one, so this is new for me as well. I might change it as I go, but we'll see how we get on. All right, guys, so let me move you over a little bit. That's better. Sorry. Couldn't see it. We're going to come. It's up to you whether you go from the top or the bottom. I'm going to go from the top, but if you want to go from the bottom and work your way up, that's fine. Have a little look at your um, chest area. I'll put mine there for you so you can see. And I'm just going to literally bring it out slightly, comes down, comes round. And we're just going to angle this so it comes down to meet our little leg section. And now I've got this line in, I can take out this original one that I did. Boom. Love it. Who's got a goose? Just going to have a quick drink. Guys, keep, keep hydrated. Okay. Are we all good with that? Was that clear? Now, before we do his leg, let's get the back section in, shall we? Now, his back section, love him. We're just going to come down to roughly where our towel's going to be. Now, I know we can't see this part of his towel, but we're just going to sketch this in really lightly. If you have a little look, it just comes up and over ever so slightly in like a half moon crescent shape. Up, out and round, just like that. I'll hold it up in a second and then you can see. Now, he's got a line in between. If you look at your image, he's got a line where the feathers join in the middle of his back. But we'll do that in a sec. Because this part of his, of his back, love him, it's quite straight. It comes down at sort of like a 10 to 4 angle towards this tail. So do a little 10 to 4 line. Coming down. And then it sort of kicks out towards the tail mark. All right, now I'm going to stop there just so that I can hold it up for you. Yeah, so we start off with his head and his neck and we come down here. We've got his tummy in. We've got our little leg section started off there. And then we've got the back of his neck going into his lower back, headed down towards his tail. Okay. Now you've got this part in, you can do this little, um, if you see it in your picture, I'll hold it up for you, halfway spine join where the feathers meet, I think, at the back here. Sorry, it's a bit out of focus. But you can see roughly, there it is, that line there. So I've just put that in so that we can see with, when we do our painting 
where the join is in his back. Okay? Now, now we've got this part in. We're going to leave this for a second. I just want us to get a drawing in the bottom part of his um, wing that's folded up here as we head down towards our leg, okay? So if we have a look at this angle, it's sort of like uh, 10 past 7, I suppose. It's not quite... Oh, maybe it is 8. Yeah, maybe it is 10 past 8. 10 past 8, we're headed down. Headed down towards his leg. Now, his leg, I'm going to bring down a little bit lower for mine. Like that. All right, so if you need to make any changes, do so. And we're going to head up at like 10 to... 10 past 8, sorry. So we'll head up slightly like this. Mm, it's a bit longer. It's maybe like that. Then it kicks up a little bit. If I zoom in for you, you can see where I, where I am. So I've gone up here, up again, up and up again. And then we're just going to come up here. All right. So the white section is where I am. Bring it up. Follow your, follow your picture. It's not quite straight. There's a bit of a kick in it, but it doesn't matter. Bring it up. They're feathers, so we can kind of make them as unique as we want. And we're going to head up here like that. Okay. It's actually a little bit rounder. I need to make mine a bit rounder. That's it. Take any darker lines out that you don't need going to take out my tail ending because it actually goes I'll draw it in the way I'm going to draw it and then I'll hold it up for you to see okay so obviously we've got these feathers coming down here that sort of come like this sort of an angle but we can do those with our paint so that's all right not quite three in there but it's all right doesn't matter and then he's got like a round bit that comes like that that you can't see but it's there so I'm gonna I'm gonna do mine like that, guys. Okay, let me hold it up for you. It's mm, what kind of shape is that? It's literally just two lines with a round bit on the end. I know it's not really technical, but we can we can wing this. You know, this is going to be quite a messy sort of free style loose piece. So it doesn't have to be a carbon copy. Remember, this is a painting or an illustration, not a photograph. Okay, this is just the guide that we're working from. All right. How are you getting on with that? Is that okay? I'm just going to hang fire while everyone kind of sketches that in. We're getting there, guys. Look, we've nearly got him in. Just got to do his legs and his, uh, his beak area. Not bad, not bad. 20 minutes. Now, you can also see here that he's got this little section here, this white area, and there's another line above it so just roughly head up towards his tail like that and put this this part in so it's just a rough you can sketch that in as you like just a rough line that comes down and across that separates this little white section I know there's a bit of black feather coming out here and that's going to go about here but we're going to put that in roughly with our paint afterwards so you if you want to like I'm going to do here you can make just a little square area so you can see where you're going to put the darker color okay so just get that in and then all we need to do is just do a little feather mark coming up here to separate his his main back part of his wing and his tummy, which actually helps because we've got a line here, can you see, halfway between the two. From the top to the bottom, there's a really faint um, change in feather direction. Yeah, so just put that in there, halfway. And it comes down like that. I'll hold it up for you now so you can see what I've just done there. And all I'm doing, guys, is following the lines in the photo. I'll hold it there for a second so you can kind of see what I've done. They're really light and sketchy marks because we're going to take them out afterwards when we've added our paint. Is everyone okay with, with how we've kind of...
put that in. And that there is the dark section I was talking about. We'll put that in at the end with our colour. I'm just going to leave that there for a couple of seconds so that everyone can kind of lock in their, their body section. Now while we're down here, we're going to get this leg in, okay? Now, duck feet, geese feet, they're not easy to do at all. But the first thing we need to do is to take out now the original marks that we did, because we're going to put these in now. Okay, so let's have a little look. His angle of his leg comes down at... Mm, that's six o'clock. It's on its way to seven, but it's not quite straight, is it? So it comes down at a slight angle, okay? So bring it down at a slight angle. I'm going to say it's roughly that long because I can still see my mark there. But now we've got the rest of him blocked in. We can draw this freehand, okay? Now, as you can see here on your picture, there's a slight curve this side in his leg. So let's just put that in. It's a slight curve. Make my top of my leg a bit more bent round. And we head down. And it gets ever so slightly wider as you head towards his foot. Okay. Okay, shall I hold it up? That helps. I know sometimes it helps if I hold them up. Okay. Now, I always find the feet a little bit tricky, okay? So bear with me with this. I'm going to sketch it in and then I'll hold it up for you to see, okay? Because I may well get it wrong the first time. So just pause for a minute or rub out what you, you don't need. I'm just going to try and do this. freehand and then because I never ever get the proportions right first time ever even seven years later I always have to make random changes as I go I'll hold it up for you guys Just let me get it in I don't want to get it wrong and hold it up. I want to make sure it's right first for you. Just hang fire a sec. Not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. So now that you kind of see other shapes that you want to change and correct, but that's okay. On the whole, it's not bad. It might be a little bit wide. That's better. Right, let me hold that up for you. All I did there was follow the shapes in the photo, guys, okay? There's not really any way you can talk through that. It's just a case of drawing what you see, okay? Try not to look at it as a foot, remember. Try and look at it as lines and shapes and angles rather than, oh, it's a duck foot. Okay, because if you do that, your brain's just going to go, oh, I know what a duck foot looks like. Let me hold it up for you. Okay. So just head down from the legs. And zoom in on that foot. Okay. And if you look, oh, I've done that quite well, actually, look. If you have a look on the photo, his foot here, the leading edge of his foot, is pretty much parallel with the back of his neck. And if you have a look at mine, 
it's pretty much spot on. If that helps, use that as a guide. We're nearly done guys, 35 minutes, we're nearly done. We can get painting. Okay, I'll just put it down and leave it there for a second while everyone kind of gets, gets that in. Guys, we've nearly got a goose, I'm loving it. Loving him. Let's take out all these little marks that I don't need now. Are we all good? Oh, I wish I could see your comments. I wish I could hear you. I don't like it like this. But still. I'm going to make my neck a little bit more curved here, just while you're finishing up your leg. I want to bring it round a bit more. That's better. You can make any little adjustments that you want to if you see them. It's the right time to do it when we're at the pencil stage. Now, let's have another look at this foot here. This foot is, it sort of comes about here there's a little bit of a distance between his his tummy um but this this part of his um foot is almost like i don't know what they call it. it's not a thumb but you know what i mean it touches the top part of the other foot so just put that little that mark in there it's like a little uh, thumb area and then we head down i'll hold it up again in a sec don't panic and I'm literally just copying what I say, guys. I'm not, there's no real way of being able to measure this. It's just freehand. So we're going to get that in. I'll hold this up as well for you. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little short here, but that's okay. I don't mind. It's fine. There. Let me hold that up for you. You can see both together then, then maybe that will help with the lining things up he's not bad actually he's not bad it's a little a couple of mistakes but i'm a bit nervous today so i haven't done one of these for a good couple of weeks well three weeks i think now so a bit nervous but it's all right on the whole he's fine we've got him within our space within our paper proportions are good so we'll add a bit of color all we've got to do now is stick in his beak and a little bit of his eye and we're good to paint guys i reckon we'll be doing it by 45 minutes. Technically, we've only been doing 30 minutes drawing because we started dead on 11. So you've got a goose in 30 minutes, which is brilliant. Okay. Give everyone a few more seconds just to get their goose sorted. Quite happy with him, though. Next part, we're headed up here. All right, so for those of you who are ready. If we have a little look here at this section, this white area, it comes up just before the top of his head and it follows on from his neck here. So we're just gonna put that in. So just put in this little white section, again, freehand, because you can't really plot this because there's curves and things in it. So leave a little gap at the top here of his head and just follow the lines that you've got there something like that again I'll hold it up for you just follow your photo oh can't see it I can't see it maybe right there that's it yeah so I just followed the white section in that photo there Okay, so get that in. Get 
a shadow, sorry. Okay. And now all we're going to do, if you have a look here, that's pretty much where his beak starts. So we can follow on from that and head down here. Slight angle, it's almost like, I don't know, it's a bit past ten past eight, I suppose, that sort of an angle. We head down and that's roughly where his beak is. Now there's a slight curve on the underside of his beak here before we get to the point. There's a slight bend in the bottom. So I'm going to put that in because you can't really see it there on mine. So I'm just going to put a slight curve at the bottom. I'll hold it up again after, don't worry. So it's a bit like that. Again, just follow your picture, guys. And we're going to head up, hmm, sort of that angle, almost ten past seven, I suppose, towards the top of his head. Now, his top of his head's got quite a square angle. It's quite a. If we have a look at this, it's about five past eight here to here. So, if that angle helps you, go with that. Okay. So, I'm going to go. Mine's a little bit long there. That's it, and then round. And that should be your goose head in. Let me hold it up for you. Slight curve at the bottom of the beak and head up at, oh, if I can keep that still. No, it's gone out of focus. Here, 10 past eight-ish, five past eight-ish. And then over the top of his head, okay? Just let everybody get that in. I'm not going to rush off ahead because we're, we're there. We've got it. We're done. Look at him. Oh, I love him. I really do. I love him. Quick drink. Loving him. I always got a goose. Now, the only thing we haven't done, actually, before we do his eye, we haven't put in this uh, the end of the darker part of his neck before we hit his tummy. So that kind of goes like that. So if you want to put that mark in, put that in. I've got to do my little other bit here, his foot. Now, his eye, guys, his eye, you can't really see it, love him. Um, oh, you really can't see it on mine. Have a look at yours, it's here. Now, I'm gonna draw it in. Um, and there's a tiny like light section that you, you're quite hard pushed to see. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw one in. And I'm gonna do like a little white light section at the top of mine. Okay, I'll hold this up for you in a sec so you can see. And his beak, similarly, you can't see on this because of the way that the light in the reflection, but there's a curve here and a line where his mouth is, love him. Okay, so I'll sketch it in and I'll hold it up for you to see. Okay, so it goes like that. Eh, my beak could be a bit longer, actually. Might make it a bit longer. See, any little adjustments, just make them as we go. Mm, let's take that out. Just going to make my... Beak a little bit. A little bit longer like that. That's it. And then there's the separation. Take out a couple of these darker marks. Now, if I show you his um, nose area, I've just made mine slightly longer. Oh, what did I tell you? <laughs> Bear with me, guys, the postman's here.
I'm back. Told you, didn't I? I always know. I'm just going to do a little bit of a correction on his head, love him. Right, and we're pretty much there, guys. Let me hold that up for you again, just for anyone who missed that while I was rudely interrupted. Okay, so I've just put a little um, light section in his eye. I know you can't see that in your picture, but you do them as you wish because then they'll all look different. And we'll have loads of different effects on their faces, which I think will be lovely when I put them all together. All right. I hope that helps. I'm going to just um, show you his feet again for anybody who might need to see his feet. And if I just put him down, then you can see the whole image in one. I hope that's okay. I hope that makes sense. I hope everyone's got a goose or nearly got a goose or happy with their drawing. Can you see them all in there? I hope so. Now, if you've got any harder pencil marks that you want to um, just lighten, just take your rubber and just slowly and lightly brush over them because then when we add our colour, it's easier to rub them out afterwards. So I'm just going to lightly buzz over mine so I can still see the marks, but they're not as prominent and not as pronounced. Okay, it just makes it easy when we add our paint. All right. Are we good to go? I'm ready to start painting. If you need a bathroom break, a drinks break, put the kettle on, whatever you need to do, do that now. And we're going to get our colour going. If you need to make any last minute changes, get them in now. I'm just going to, oh, not with that pencil, I'm not. Just going to make a little, little change on mine here. Change my neck a little bit. This is the fun part, guys. The, the, the tricky bit, the getting them in and proportions and everything's done. The fun part is coming. We've, we've now got a goose. We've split it down into thirds. We've got the top part, second part, third part. We've got the width. We've got the centre point. And we've got all the details in. We're good to go. All right? Now, I'm going to sit down to paint. So I hope everyone's kind of okay with the... Um, where you can see the paper. I will move it around as I go, just trying to make sure that you can all see everything. All right, I'm going to sit down. Get your uh, water nearby, keep your tissue handy. And if you're using paint, get your brushes, your palettes. I'll give everyone, what time we got? If I give everyone until, well, another 30 seconds, just to either finish up the drawing or bathroom or open the door to the postman <laughs> and we've done that in 40 minutes exactly which is amazing really really good the first brush guys we're going to go in is with our nice big bad barry so if you've got a nice big bold brush um we're going to go in with that first okay Right guys, that's it, that's 30 seconds. Let's start going, shall we? Let's, let's go. Now, when I do my geese, I like to use a nice purple tone in my neck. Um, you don't have to, if you wanna go straight in with black, that's fine. I just like to add a nice bit of color. You know what I'm like, my work's always loads of random colors in it. So you make it as vibrant as you like or as true to the picture as you like, totally up to you. Um, I'm gonna mix up on my palette, so I'm going to go in with a nice bold purple and a bit of indigo or navy. And off we go. We're going to start with the neck, guys. So I'm just going to get stuck in with the colour. Be brave, be bold, give it a go. 
Remember that wherever you put the water, that's where your colour is going to run. All right. Okay. I like to put a dark area on one side and then I like to bring the colour out towards the other edge with the water. Nice and light. Don't hang around with it, just get stuck in. Now you can see some of these little feather strokes here, which is what I just put in. So I'll just put a couple of them in. Wherever you like, really, doesn't matter. They're all going to look different. Head over the top. Remember to leave that white section we've got going on. I like to make it a little bit darker as we head towards his nose, beak, sorry, rather. Just follow your lines that you've done. Remember to leave his eye for the minute if we can. Just be really careful. I know it's a big brush, just be a bit careful. Just leave his eye shape. We'll do that right at the end, probably. Oh, I love him. Loving him. I like leaving this white area. I just think it gives a shimmer of light on his, uh, on his feathers. So I like that. I'm going to leave that there, like that. Now, while I've got lots of paint that's quite loose and wet, I'm going to just um, neatly go around his beak with it and tidy up around the white section. Okay, like that. Okay, are we all good? Now, I tend to use the same colour for his feet and his legs. So, while I've got the same colour already on the brush, all I'm going to do is get that colour in his uh, little wading feet there. Same again. Leave the parts that join his toes because you can make those lighter like they are in the picture. Alright, so all I've done there is use whatever's left on my brush and done his feet. I'm going to stop after I've done this foot, guys, and just wait for you to kind of get to where we are at the same point. But we're not, we're not, um, I'm not rushing, but we, we really don't need to be too neat and tidy about it. It's, um, we've drawn it really quickly and actually it's uh, quite a straightforward piece to, uh, to paint. So just, just be brave, be bold, get stuck in. Don't worry about making mistakes, the hard bit's done. Right, I'm just going to wait there now for you to kind of get to, oh, what's happened there? The same point. I think you can pause it on YouTube, you know, because I've just paused it on my iPad screen. How are we doing? Is that all right? Oh, I love him. Look at him. Love him already. Now, similarly, I'm just going to neaten up round his eye with a wet paint. And we'll put the detail in that in a little while. All right. Just wait for everyone to kind of get to where his feet are in. Turned off the YouTube on my uh, device. There we go. Oh, there we go. 
All right, how's everyone doing? Have we got a neck and a head and two feet done? Because all I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my same brush and there shouldn't be too much paint on this now. So you can take a bit out with your water and I'm just going to make his legs that little bit lighter. Same shade, bit lighter. All right, same over here. Actually, this back one's a bit darker because it's in the background, not the foreground, but it's okay. All right, so I'm just going to do that. I'll hold you up in a second, guys. And with my medium brush now, I'm just going to work the paint over and down. to these parts of his feet. Now if your colour runs like that, it doesn't matter. We know it's a different section of his foot. Now this side here is a little darker, so we can make it a little bit darker as we head down here. I'm going to hold it up for you in just one second. Same again. Bring the colour down towards his toe in each of those three sections. We can eaten it up as we go later on. Don't worry too much about it not being 100% neat. And I'll hold it up for you guys, hang on. Be careful because it's still quite wet. I'm going to hold them there for a second. So all we've done there is use the same colour as our neck in the widest part of his feet. And those smaller sections that divide the foot up where his claws and toes are, they're just a bit lighter. My colours run on the bottom foot, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. And you can see over here, I've just used a little brush to make the half roundish markings in his legs to spread the colour over. Okay. Don't panic about it, just, just relax with it. I mean, he's fab already, isn't he? Love him. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You don't have to do this, this is just what I do. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of opera rose down on my palette. And I'm going to get my medium brush. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in with a bit of opera. Nice and wet and loose. In my neck. Oh, I love it. You don't have to do that. But I always do. Just gives such a nice effect. Look, look at that. Love him. Bit of opera. Right, how are we doing? So what I'm going to do. Just going to neaten up that area where it's run. Just go in with a little clean brush if that's happened. Clean brush, bit of water. That's a bit better. Just tidy it up a little bit. Doesn't matter too much. Straighten them up if you need to. If you've still got a bit of wet paint. Okay. Now, next thing, we're going to put his claws on. So I'm going to go in with um, a black on this one. And I'm just going to do enough paint on it, that'd be a start. Just going to do three little marks at the end of each toe 
that resemble claws, okay? Now, while I've got this dark black on my brush here, I'm going to make a little darker shade underneath the middle toe section and the top toe section. I'll hold it up again, don't panic. To give the effect of a shadow, okay? Ooh. And same underneath this part of his foot. So it looks like he's standing. I'll hold it up for you just a second. Oh, here, Volcra still on there. And blend it ever so slightly. Okay. Adds a little bit of a degree of realism to it. I'm not even following the photo now, guys. This is a painting now. This is my painting. This is not the photograph. We use the photograph to draw it. But this is now our piece. And they're all going to be unique and they're all going to be individual. Again, I'm going to use a little bit of a shadow there. And I'm going to hold him up, okay? Hold him straight, that's it. So you can you see, I just put a little bit of dark black underneath those lighter sections in his feet and a bit underneath his foot. So it looks like he's standing on a solid surface as opposed to floating in the air. Don't worry about things like this here, where it's sort of half run down, half hasn't. Same here, where there's like another colour run here. I'm not worried about it. That's what makes paintings paintings. It makes them all unique. Okay. Oh, you know what I've missed? I missed his little toe over there. Look. Oh, sorry, love. Let's get your toe in. Bless you. Okay, how are we doing? Is everyone all right? Oh, I hope so. I feel like I'm just talking to myself. Guys, you've only done 50 minutes. It's not even on an hour yet. We've nearly got a goose. This part's really straightforward. Now, I'll hold the picture up again here so we can see. Now, as you can see with the feathers, they're sort of like a brownie colour and they fade out towards his chest here, which is white. Now, I tend to put in either a little bit of blue, but because I've been using purple, I'll use a lighter purple tone here. Um, but the brown, I'm going to block in with our Big Bad Barry, but he has got these lovely half crescent shapes, which are lighter that you can see for his feathers. So totally up to you how you put them in. All right. Everyone's is going to be different. So I'm going to rinse off my brush. If you need to change your water, change it over because we're going in with a different colour. I'm going to go in with a nice mid brown and I'm going to add a little bit of um, burnt sienna in it as well and all I'm going to do is make these sort of half crescent moon shapes with my big brush but leaving a little bit of light and they're kind of they get darker towards here and down towards his tail. So don't, don't be too um, rigid with this. I'm going to add a little bit of my purple mixture back in as I head up towards that neck area. I'll hold it up again, guys. Don't worry if you're like panicking now thinking, I don't know what to do. Just follow your picture. I mean, he's fab. Look at him. Loving him. Just play with it. Just stick some colours in. Go for it. I'm now going to let my colour run 
down there. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's like music to me ears. Oh, I love that. I'm going to keep going down towards his tail. Leaving bits of light as we go. Now his tail direction, the feathers, they, they change direction, okay? They start to come down vertically, all right? So just put a couple of vertical ones in there. They are a little bit darker, so feel free to add a little bit of darker brown in as we go down towards our tail. And then I'm going to just put a bit of darker over the other side of our middle line that we did. Do you remember we did our middle line at the middle of his back? I'll hold it up for you in a sec. Don't panic. Let's play with that a bit. Oh, not like that. I'm just going to fade that down this way with a dry brush. Remember, guys, wherever you put your water, that's where your paint's going to go. All right. Just follow your picture. Light and shade. Light and shade. And his, the feathers underneath start to come down this way towards his foot. Again, leave a bit of white. And it comes darker again here, like at his tail. So I'm just going to put a darker bit here. And a little bit there. It's supposed to go up that way. And that's all right. I'm going to hold him up for you now so you can see what I did. Now, I know I haven't finished the back here, I just want that to dry slightly before I blend the colour. Okay. So I added a bit of purple at the start to mix in and blend in with my neck. Then I went with mid-brown and a bit of burnt sienna. Added a bit more purple and just made just marks. They're just marks on the papers, guys. I put a little bit of darker brown towards his tail and at the back there. But this is where I've let the colour run with water. And I love the effect it gives. Okay, so just, just play with it. Don't be shy, just get stuck in. I'm going to bring these feathers down here a bit more. And same with this darker area I just put in here as we go up towards this section. And I'm just going to make a few more little half crescents with my medium brush towards that, that line that we did in the middle. Yeah, pretty happy. Might put a little bit of purple in the back there. Just links it all together. It just, it makes the whole thing much more of a united composition. A few more uh, feather strokes down this end. Now remember, we've got this darker area here, haven't we? So try and remember to leave that for our darker colour. Okay. Are we all good? I hope you're all good. And like I said here, I'm going to put another shade, a similar colour to this, lilac-y colour. Violet, I think it is, on this palette. Just here. Just to symbolise the edge of his chest. Oh, I'm loving him, guys. Oh, I'm loving him. Who else is liking theirs? So let that blend a little bit there. Get 
going to hang fire for a minute. Just let everybody kind of get their feathers sorted. Dead on an hour. Who's nearly got a goose? Ooh, ooh. Now, the next part I'm going to do is this darker area here, those dark feathers that we've got just peeking out from underneath that we left a section for. Um, they also come up underneath here, the bottom part of his tail. So I'll get that in and then I'll hold it up for you. Again, I'm going to go in with the black, guys, or you can go in with dark grey. And just literally, I'm going to put it in like that and I'm going to go in with my teeny tiny brush. And I'm just going to make some little feather strokes like that. Any direction. Oh, love him. Same again under here. Now hold this up. Don't worry. See? A bit of black, a bit of water, and use your teeny tiny brush. Make some hair strokes. Leaving that little white section again. Now, there is a little darker area here that separates, if I zoom in, you can see there's like darker feathers here that separate the join between this part of his body and this part, this angle and then this angle. So if you want to, this is optional, you don't have to do this, um, you can put in a little bit of darker markings if you want, just to sort of symbolise the change in feather direction. Do you see what I mean, like that? Totally optional. It just shows you where the feathers change direction. Again, I'm working freehand here, guys. I'm not actually copying the picture. Love him. You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to put a little bit more Opera Rose back in. Clean brush though, that'll help. And I'm going to do a couple of flecks. Just in her body there. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just me. Chucking in things from my style. Now, if you're not happy with one, take it out. <laughs> are we happy I'm just going to put his end part of his tail in there guys too that we've that we've improvised today but we're gonna i'm gonna just go like that we know it's his tail I'm really happy with this one I need to do a little bit of brown there by his leg so i'm just gonna you can do a couple of little feather strokes here if you like, join this area up. We're nearly done, boys and girls, we are nearly done. One thing I will do, because my paper absorbs quite quickly, I'm going to just put a darker line just down the front side of his leg there on this one because my water's absorbed, sorry, my paper has absorbed the water quite quickly on the paint. So I'm just going to um, just put a little line of darker grey or black just down the front there. Okay. How are we doing? Oh, I've got another thumbs up. I'm so glad you're happy. Love it. Right. Again, don't feel you have to do this. This is just me letting the colour run. I'm going to let my colour run up here. And I'm also going to let it run. 
top of his head. I'm going to hold it up for you. So you can see what I just did there with his leg. And his tail. And I've got a tiny hint of pink in there. And a tiny hint of pink up there. And I've let the paint run up there. And up there. <laughs> Doing really well, guys. Really well. Now, let's get stuck in up here, shall we? Let's get his beak. Sorry, my paper. Are you getting a shadow off the, the paper? Sorry. There. Let's get stuck in with this beak, and then we're going to do the eye. Now, the beak, guys, is really straightforward. It's really straightforward. I'm going to go in with an indigo, dark blue and a bit of grey. And all I'm going to do is colour it in. <laughs> There's no rocket science to this. There is a darker mark on it, and we'll do that at the end. Okay, but just follow your lines. Follow your little bump shape at the bottom. Leave a bit of light if you want to. Just follow those lines that you drew. Oh, guys, I'm loving him. I'm loving him. I'm not going to make any more detail on that at the minute. I'm just going to leave it. Let it dry. While I've still got that colour on my brush, I'm going to put a tiny mark on that white section at the bottom. Use a bit of water and just blend it up. It's a little bit of a shadow underneath there. Let's get it in. Okay. I'm going to hold that up so you can see his nose. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. Now, if you've got a teeny tiny brush, this is what we need now. We need to get stuck in up there on that eye. And we're going to go in with black, guys. I'm leaving a little bit of light up there. You don't need to go by your picture. And I'm literally, I'll hold it up again in a sec, don't worry. And I'm literally going to get his eye in. This is where he suddenly gets a personality and a character. The minute you put an eye in there. Oh, love him. That's the one. That is the one. I feel like I know him. Well, I do. I met him yesterday, but you know. That's it. A little bit of light at the top. The rest of it's black. So get your eyes in. I'm just going to hang fire while everyone kind of gets his eye in. Aaron 10. We've got a goose. All we've got to do is put a little bit of um, colour here. And I'll talk you through that in a sec. Similarly, I'm going to do another little bit there. And two details here. Now, totally optional again. I'm going to put a little bit more shadow here by his feet. While you're all doing his eye. This is optional. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. I'm just going to put... Just a little bit. of shadow where he's standing 
This isn't in the picture, this is just me adding it in. Totally optional, don't need to do it if you don't want to or if you're worried about it. Now, another thing I'm going to do here that I was just saying about changing colours, I like to use this um, Gambogue Hue that I've got here. Um, I use it quite a lot, um, and I'll show you the effect it gives uh, on a piece like this. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. If you want to leave it white, that's absolutely fine. I just love a little bit of Gambogue. So I'm just going to show you how I use that, all right? Again, don't feel you have to. I just love the effect that it gives. It's nice and bright and it just changes the way it looks, I think, for me. Now I'm going to use a little bit of my grey again, just under here, just to give a little... Um, I know the area is white, don't worry, we left it white, but I just want to give the edge effect there. Really happy with this, guys, today. Going to let this colour run a little bit as well, because it's a little bit wet still, so I'm just going to blur that, soften the edges slightly. little tiny bit more shadow underneath this foot here oh. I'm gonna hold it all up again in a minute for you and I'll walk around not walk around it but you know do a little so you can see the whole piece can't wait to see all these guys I really can't now if your nose is drier, beak, sorry, I keep saying nose, you know what I mean. If your beak is drier, mine's not 100%, so this is either going to be a failure. Let's go positive. There's a tiny little black mm. <laughs> mark on its beak like that. My nose is still too wet, but it's fine. I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to darken up the top part here. And there's also this line, you can't really see it on my picture, where his top part of his beak separates his bottom part, where his actual mouth is. You can't see it on this because it's too dark, but it is there. Um, I'm not going to put mine in yet because it starts here. And as you can see, it's still too wet. So I'm going to leave that for a second, okay? So I will do that when it's dry. And you know what? We're pretty much there. We're there. All I'm going to do is add in a couple more flicks of middle opera. No, not like that. I'm not going to change that now. Bit of tissue. Nice clean water. Take out the ones you don't want. Went a bit mad there. Mm, take that one out. Oh, do you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to get stuck in with my old, my old mate, Cobalt. It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? You know how much we love him. We love him. I'm going to put a little bit there. Oh, there he goes. That's the one. And I think, boys and girls, I'm going to down tools. I think I'm going to down tools. Because I'm really happy with him. I really hope you're happy with yours. I'll hold him up. 
we'll do a little walk through. Now my paint's still wet, so I've got to be a bit careful. So there we are at the top. You can see what I mean there about the line in his beak. I've just drawn a rough mark there. And that's where it's going to go. There's my little gambo cue that I've put in the white section. I've blurred the top part of his head. I've put a bit of opera rose pink in his neck. And again in his body. We've let the colour run. We've let it blend over at the back. We've let it blend over here at the front. We've put a bit of our old friend cobalt turquoise light in the tummy there. And we've put a bit of a shadow underneath his feet. We've gone dark underneath here in the feathers section as we go down towards the tail. Again, we've chucked in a bit more pink in there, just a hint of it. And our overall piece looks something like that. And you've done that in an hour and 15. I love him. I don't know about anyone else, but I'm loving him. Now, two more things. First thing, all of these light pencil marks, for those of you who've done it before, you know, if you haven't, um, I'll just let you know. We're going to take out all of our pencil marks like this, but we're only going to do it when it's 100% dry. So if you know you've got dry areas, take them out. If you haven't and you're not sure, for instance, here's still wet, so I'm not going to touch that. Um, same here, there's another one there. This one should be all right. Just minding the opera that I've just put in. This bit, under here I'm leaving at the minute. Little one here I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave the one by the feet because it's still wet. Any pencil marks that you can take out do, otherwise wait until it's 100% dry. Um, the last thing we're gonna do guys is sign it. Always sign your work, mine always goes in the bottom right hand corner. And I really hope you've all got a goose. Not bad for a photo that I took 24 hours ago. I'm quite happy with him. So, with no further ado, I'm going to turn you around. Back in the room. Oh, I look a bit dishevelled. What's going on? Oh, that was so much fun. I really like this one. I was really nervous today, I've got to be honest. I was a bit nervous, no, not knowing how it was going to work and how it's going to go, but it did work, so that's a good start. Um, not sure why I couldn't get any comments up, but I've got some thumbs up, so I'm hoping that you all enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to have a little look at that because uh, I'm guessing, from what I just clicked on there, I, I think it's because I allowed access for children, because obviously for kids who are under social media age who still like art, and I have had a lot during the lockdown period on Facebook, um, who obviously were joining in with parents and things, um, who loved joining in and I had some fab pictures from like seven and six year olds and I thought well if they can see it on YouTube then it'll be easier for them to join in as well. So that's why I made it accessible for kids too because um, I just thought it was for everyone really. But if it means that I can't hear or read your comments then that's a bit different. So um, not sure, bear with me with that. This is obviously the first session so it's completely new. Um, Really grateful for everybody who shared my channel link. No idea where to find that either, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, I'm going to do what I've always done, guys. So do send me your photos over, what you've done, but send them to the Facebook page because I don't know if you can do that on here. Um, and I'm not really a YouTuber, so just do what we've always done. Take a photo of what you've done, send it over to me in a message on Facebook, and I'll do like another collage, and I'll share it on Facebook, and I'll do like an Instagram grid like I've done with all our other ones. Um, yeah, it's been fun. I really hope for everybody who is watching it back, so you, they'll be saved for you. Um, do always let me know what you think or anything I need to change or, um, you know, any suggestions for next time because obviously it's been a while. So, uh, yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed it. Thank you so much to everybody who's watched um, and for everybody who's subscribed um, to get me to be able to do this on here to this point. So I'm really grateful and thankful for everybody who's done that. Um, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. I'm going to crack on now before I've got to go and do the pick up and running around again. Um, it's still sunny out there, so enjoy whatever is left of Friday and I will speak to you soon.